Hello, this is Dr. Jack Myers. Welcome to Jack Myers Ministries and My Family Church Podcast Channel. Be blessed by this message. Open your Bibles, if you would, please, to the book of Matthew, chapter 4. Can you all hear me? Testing one, two. Can you hear me now? We got this new head mic thing we got going on. Matthew chapter 4. I want to talk to you about making it through the press. <laughs> Anybody in this room feel press? Can I see your hand? Oh. <laughs> okay. The rest of you, then you can leave. Okay, praise God. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just, I mean, I'm going to talk to the people that are making it through the press. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. We're going to give you some scriptures, and then we'll talk about it, okay? Matthew chapter 4, verse 111. Then was Jesus led up into the Spirit into the wilderness. You mean to tell me that the Holy Ghost could lead you into some pressing times? Yeah, because that's where Jesus was led. To be, watch it, to be tempted of the devil. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungered. And when the tempter came, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him into a holy city and sitteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If you're the Son of God, cast yourself down. In other words, commit suicide. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thy at any time dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God again. And then again, The devil taketh him up to exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, If all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Go to Mark chapter 1. Making it through the press. Mark chapter 1, verses 8 through 13. I indeed baptize you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came to Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And straightway coming up out of them, he heard a voice from heaven that thou said, My beloved Son, in whom I will please. And immediately the Spirit drive him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verses 1 through 15. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned to the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did not eat anything. And when they were ended, afterward he was hungered. And the devil said to him, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. And Jesus answered, saying, It is written, That man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment. And the devil said to him, And whosoever I shall give it, I give it, if thou shalt worship me. And Jesus answered, said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only thou shalt serve. And he brought him to, into Jerusalem. He sent him on a pinnacle of the temple, and he said to him, If you are the Son of Man... Cast yourself down from hence, for it is written, He gives His angels charge of thee, and in their hands there shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus entered him and said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit in the Galilee, and went out famous throughout all regions round about, and taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. Now, these, it's interesting that at times when we're in a press, whether we're being pressed financially, pressed by people, pressed by our jobs, we kind of think, well, is this the enemy? Could this be the enemy? And if the enemy is attacking me, why? Why would he be attacking you? Or did the Lord lead me into this to test my faith? Because he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. In Hebrews, right, chapter 4, verse 11, or 11, 4, says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Isn't it interesting that it said the devil left after Jesus resisted? Jesus resisted with the word. That's the reason why the word is so powerful. It is written. It is written. 
He was facing all these temptations. It is written. But isn't it interesting, the Holy Ghost led him to be tempted. In this last verse here in the book of Luke, it says this. After he was tempted, he came out with great power. So in other words, he went to another level. Sometimes the temptations and sometimes the pressures of life are designed by the enemy to actually for God to bring you into another level. People say we want to go to another level financially. We want to go to another level in our marriage. We want to go to another level in our business. But sometimes the opposition, listen, I'm not saying that Satan is all-knowing because he's not all-knowing. But he knows a little bit. And what he does know about you is based upon your decisions and your actions of the past. So he assumes, he assume, he's, the, he's, the, he's the author of assumption. He, he assumes that you're going to do the same patterns in the future, so he'll set up scenarios and situations to make you fail because his goal is to kill, steal, and to destroy. Amen. So if you're in the press right now, well, make it. Make it through the press because there's a greater reward on the other side. There's a, there's a, there's a greater winning of the victory, there's a greater victory, let me put it that way. There's a greater victory on the other side. That's right. Come on. If you pass the test, you get to enter the rest. Amen. But if you don't pass the test, I got good news. You take the test over. <laughs> the trials and tribulations and the testings produce character and integrity. Yes. How you react, how you respond will determine the, the victory or non-victory. We're all, we, we all fess pressing things. It'll either press you in or it'll press you out. The Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. If you, listen, the reason why you're in the press is because you're walking in the narrow way. You're walking in the narrow way. And, and Satan wants to press you out. And he'll do everything he can. He'll talk to you. Sit on your shoulder. Oh, you don't want to go to Life Family Church. Oh, you don't want to go soul winning. Oh, you, oh, you don't want to go to Life Christian University. I mean, come on, you know, you barely could pay your bills now. You don't want to do that. Oh, uh, you, you don't want to go to, you don't want to go to, you know, God, five services in a weekend. Yeah, that's just too much. That's just too much church. You, you can't go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday night prayer, Wednesday night, and then all night prayer from 7 to 12 on Friday, that's just way, that's just way too much church. I mean, that's, that's too much God. You can't, have a, you can't have all that God. Well, it's gotten awful quiet. Have we, turned, have we turned Presbyterian? I mean, no, come on. Hello, somebody. No, God wants a balance. Listen, I'm not saying that you need to attend every single service. I don't, I don't want to attend every single service. I got other things to do. Come on, we're busy. Really, Pastor Jack? Yeah, I'm balanced. But if you can attend, attend. That's right. There's a difference between sitting home and eating bonbons in front of the television on, for seven Pastor. or eight hours yeah. instead of, and if, hello, and then not coming to church prayer. I'm, <laughs> hello. Right. I'm talking about if you can and you won't. Right. Yeah, that's, good. that's a huge difference. Yeah. That's right, Pastor. Come on. That's good work. Do you know the, the number one killer to revival? The reason why the revivals in the past haven't gone, the number one killer to revival is people get tired. Yeah. They just get tired. Now, listen, there's been a paradigm shift since the C word came out a few years ago. There was a huge exodus of the church, huge, worldwide, worldwide. And many have not yet come back. Now, I'm not blind, and I pray that you're not either. I see what's going on. I see the one world government coming. I see the Antichrist rising. I see the one world currency coming. I see the one world religion they're going to impose. I see all of that. That's, that's, everything we're going through right now is for the tribulation period, the seven-year tribulation period. Everything that we're enduring right now, two major events on God's calendar, the greatest harvest of souls that the church in the world has ever seen, and then the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church. Those two events are on God's timetable. When the church is taken out of the world, holy smoke and coals from the altar of God. You do not want to be the seven-year tribulation. You do not. It's coming. 
The Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man comes. You don't think we're living in the days of Noah right now? We are living in the days of Noah. And I think we're living in the beginning part because the, the worst things haven't happened. But we're on the verge. You want to make sure you go up in the first load. So what are you doing? I'm practicing, praise God. <laughs> I'm practicing for the first load. I can say this just like Noah told the people of the population of the world, and only eight people made the boat out of the entire population, and he preached for 120 years. But people make their own decisions. They do what they want to do however they want to do it. Please forgive me for not coating cotton candy today. We, we don't, I don't do cotton candy. I don't do s'mores. I will tell the truth. You want to know why? Because people's blood will be on my hands, and I want to make sure that people's blood are not on my hands. We will tell you the truth. If it stinks, we'll tell you it stinks. Wouldn't you want that? I mean, if you're on a road and there's a, a, a barrier that says bridge out, and you're, you're, you're cruising 65 miles an hour. I'm waving my hands in the road. Don't go. The bridge is out. Wouldn't you, want to, wouldn't you want somebody to tell you that the bridge is out? Or are you just going to run right off the road? God is a God of holiness. He's a God of purity. He's a God of righteousness. That's who he is. Come on. That press is going to come. There's a natural press in the world. Come on, you don't want to be, I would rather be pressed by God than the things in the world. There's a press in the world. Compromise. If people are feeling the press in the United States, I wonder what the rest of the world is feeling. Because this is the greatest country. Take it for one who's traveled the world. This is the greatest country in the world. And if people in the United States are feeling the press, what are they feeling in Haiti right now? In Cambodia and Uruguay and Africa. And... Now, there is a spiritual press too. So why would God cause a spiritual press? Because he's coming back for a Galatians 5 church, a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. But here's the deal. His press is with love. His press is with mercy. His press is with kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. That's his press because he doesn't force the press. He doesn't force that press because we have free will. We either are going to choose to serve God 100% or choose not to serve God. We're going to choose to come to church or not come to church. I, I, found out, I found out a statistic. Did you know that the average Christian today in the United States of America only goes to church every three weeks? They show up at church every three weeks. I thought, oh, no wonder I'm not losing my mind. Praise God, amen. That is the average Gallup poll. You want to talk about the polls? Gallup poll did a survey that people only attend church every three weeks. They cycle. I have a sermon called Stop the Crazy Cycle. President Trump said this. He said, if evangelicals would come and vote, there wouldn't be a problem. He said, I don't know why they don't vote. Maybe they're just rebellious. I heard him say that. I heard President Trump say that. I'm not, you can look it up. I repeated word for word what he said. He said, I don't know why the evangelicals don't vote. He said, maybe they're rebellious. Not me. Listen, we're living in a time that people are heaping to themselves teachers with itching ears to their own liking who don't want to hear the truth. I am not going, I have to, sta I have to stand before God Almighty, before you and the million people that we've ministered to in 28 years. I'm going to have to stand and be held accountable for that. How would you like that kind of press? So I'm going to tell the truth. Amen. You can hear the truth or reject the truth, whatever you want to do. Jesus told the truth. Did he not tell them? Did he not tell the people the truth? 
I'm sorry. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know the tree I'm trying to beat around. I don't know anything of cupcakes, Twinkies, and Cracker Jacks. I'm going to tell the truth. Wouldn't you want to hear the truth? I want to hear the truth. Not, not, not everybody wants to hear the truth. I, I don't want to be a blind person leading the blind. I want wi- eyes wide open. Come on. We're, we're, we're smart people. and There's smart people in here. There's smart people in the United States of America. We're not taking that load of trap. I mean, it's a big load of trap. Come on. And God, listen, God is raising up a remnant of people full of the word and full of the Holy Ghost. Now, listen, preachers can't preach like I'm preaching right now without a, a dose of the Holy Ghost. You've got to have a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down because it's just, come on, it's just tough medicine. You know, that's the reason. And then the Holy Ghost comes. Thank God. Oh, my gosh. Thank God. And I'm not trying to force you guys to do anything you don't want to do. You have to answer to God Almighty, the creator who breathed into you and made you. Pride can run real deep. And pride comes before a fall. It's very obvious. Now, if you're in a press right now, that is a good place to be. Because in that press... You're going to have to run to God. You're going to have to call on God. You're going to have to use his name. And get this. Here's the big word for today. Change. You might just need to change. Let me make it some friends over here. You might need some. You might need to change. I mean, imagine that. Change. Turn to your neighbor and say, I think he's talking about you. I think you need to change. I need to change. Yeah, everybody needs to change, right? We all need to change. Now, listen, change can be very painful, but it's also very beneficial. Jesus was tested in three areas. He was tested in his flesh, in his eyes, in his life. In 1 John 2, 15 and 16, it says this, Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. So Jesus was tested with the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. When the tempter came, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. He was tempted in his flesh. That was the first thing that Satan said to Jesus after 40 days. You got to be hungry. Don't you want some bread? Number two, the lust of the eyes. And the devil taking him to a high mountain showed him all the kingdom of the world in a moment. And the devil said to him, all this power I will give you for the glory of them for him has been delivered unto me, and whomsoever I give it, therefore will worship me and be done. So it was the lust of the eyes. All the kingdoms of the world that you can see, I'll give it to you. Why? Because Satan deceived Eve, and Adam committed high treason and gave over. But Jesus came, the second Adam, and he restored that which was lost in the garden. Amen. The third thing was the pride of life. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and he set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and he said, If thou be the Son of God, Throw yourself down from thence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee. So in other words, like his pride would be like, yeah, that's right, I am the son of God, so I'm going to show you Satan. I'm going to throw myself off. Those are three areas that all humanity is tested in. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus answered everything with the word. It is a prideful and selfish thing to want to die before your time. It's very prideful and very selfish. It is a very selfish thing to actually commit suicide. That is a selfish and prideful thing. It is a fleshly, a lust of the flesh to desire what somebody else has that you think you need. We all say that we want to go to another level, whether in ministry and finances, another level in business or job or marriage relationship, they will, they will, but there will come a press. If you're going to go to another level, you're going to go through the rest. Now, listen, God's grace helps you make it through the pressing time because he's not going to to allow Satan to press you beyond your measure. He won't do this. So there is grace and there's mercy. If you cry out to God, God moves on your behalf. If you tell him, listen, I'm weak. Come on, I'm weak in this area of my life. I need strength. He will answer that. But you have to ask him. You have to talk to him. You can't do it on your own. 
You wouldn't want to do it on your own. So no matter what kind of press you're in right now, it's for the, your greater good. He answered everything in the word. He said, Satan, it is written, it is written, it is written. In Revelation 12, 11, it says this, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Worshiping God will help you make it through the press. That is a real key. When we were in Chicago, I was in probably the most press of my life when we moved to Chicago. Within the first three months, I mean, we pulled the rug without on us. We we took a $50,000 loss in ministry. Relocated to the frozen tundra. <laughs> Chicago is the frozen tundra. Chicago is known as the windy city. It's not, it's not because of the wind. It's because of the politicians. <laughs> that is a true statement. It's no, <laughs> yeah. I remember when we moved up there, it was in probably September, October, right? When it was November we moved up there. And within 30 to 40 days, Sherry and Mel came and visited. When they, when we were, they were coming down the escalator, she saw me. She said, uh-oh, the lights nearly have gone out in him. Wow. Greatly concerned her. Wow. Wow. I, I'm not a, a, a man that's given to suicide or even thoughts of suicide. Right. I had an overwhelming feeling of suicide. Wow. Because when you, when you pull the rug out from underneath you, in believing that you heard God. Come on. And then you're in the press. Like that is nobody's business. Because financially, everything doubled in some areas tripled when we went to Chicago. I mean, when your rent goes from 600 bucks a month to $2,500 a month, that's a press right there. When the, the electric bill is you know, only like $80 a month and it goes to $150 a month, that's a serious press. Serious. And then you're in, a, you're in a new place, following the will of God. Come on, hello, somebody. Not knowing what to do. And, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, I don't know. Because you have to understand, at that time in our life in ministry, we were just traveling ministers. And so, over, you know, and we've been in the ministry 28 years, but 16 to 17 of those were full-time traveling. So you establish, you know, routes. And you establish what I call, what you call bread and butter churches. Because there, there are only a certain amount of ministers that can come to a church. We, we have, we're abnormal. I'll just, I'll just tell you. I mean, we have probably between four to eight ministers every single year, which is totally abnormal. But when you've been in a traveling ministry, you understand. So we call, we call bread and butter churches. Around Christmas time is when most churches don't invite traveling ministers. So you establish relationship with pastors during the holiday season, so so because so, you make money two ways, you have monthly supporters or you get offerings. And if there's not enough monthly supporters and there's enough no offerings, yeah. come on, hello. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Pastor Marie and I, we're not afraid to work. Right. Right. I don't have a problem. I mean, I'm working my third business right now. Which is kind of cool. I like it. So here we are. We're in this place, right? I mean. Desperation. We didn't know what to do. So she's looking for a job. I'm now looking for a job because I'm thinking we got to eat, got to pay the bills. You got to do what you got to do with whatever. Amen. So I, I was a um, Dish Network installer at one time, and so I went down to the local Dish Network there in Chicago, and I said, "Hey, listen, I'm an installer and all that kind of stuff." And they wouldn't hire me, even though I had all the. I'm like, "What? You're not going to hire me? Are you kidding me? No." So I thought, "Man, what am I going to do? How about like trust God?" Can you imagine that? Trusting God. But with business people, you have to understand, we, we kind of have this philosophy, it's to be, it's up to me. Because when you, there's, there's a different mentality, and we're going to talk about it this weekend. There's a different mentality between an employee mentality and an employer mentality. Big difference. So here I am. So what did I do? I ran to God. I ran to him. I ran like I'd never run to God ever before. Yeah. I had, uh, we, we, we were in a con- two-story condo with a basement. I took a portion of the basement, and I made a prayer room in there. So I, had, I painted it specifically. I had white carpet, because I'm one of the whitewashed of salvation. I had red walls for the blood of Jesus. I had a poster of the Ten Commandments, and I had another poster of all the names of God. And I played worship music in that room 24-7, yes. whether we were home or not. And there were times when I was in that room, oh, my God. I ran to God. It's either in your life 
or run to God. I don't know if you've ever been there, but I was there. So I understand that, if you've ever been there. So there were times that God would come and just flood that prayer room. Flood. I would weep and laugh uncontrollably. The, the God's presence would surround me. It was the most amazing thing. And I didn't realize that I needed to change, just like you. Come on. Sometimes we don't look at ourselves perspectively, do we? Uh, but others can see it. <laughs> Believe me, if you're married, ask your spouse. They'll tell you. Come on, hello, somebody. They're the closest one to you. Well, that went over really well. Praise God, amen. <laughs> Praise God. So I ran to God. Now, listen to me. I, I will tell you this, because I've had encounters with God, a lot of encounters with God. There was one time. I was such under the press. When I went into the prayer room, I started laughing and weeping so uncontrollably. I thought, that's it. You've lost your mind. You're, you're, you're uber to the top. You have, gone, you have gone crazy. And it's just me and God. And then you, and then you want to test it. Like, is this just me? I, listen, the power of God was so strong in my prayer room, I couldn't walk out of it. I crawled out of my prayer room, crawled out. And I'm thinking, you, you loony, 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 loony. I'm serious. So I thought, I got to test this. So I opened the basement door, and Marie was getting ready for work. Hey, babe, come down to the prayer room. Oh, I'm getting ready for a word to leave. I said, I want to pray with you. <laughs> so she comes down, you know, she's all pretty up and gussied up, makeup and everything, looking, looking really good, I'll just tell you right there. She comes down, and I said, you going first. <laughs> That's true, true story. I said, you going, you go. I'm testing. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I just crawled out. I'm thinking, you nuts. You've had, people thought you, you, you've gone cuckoo and put a straight dragon on you, commit you. So I said, you go first. As so, <laughs> soon as she walks right through, I, and I had a curtain. As soon as she walks through the curtain, she crumbles in the floor, starts weeping and laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> And I'm standing on the outside, okay? And she's, boy, and she's ah, I'm snot, and, everything, ah, and she crawls out, crawls out of the prayer room. All right, that's it. That was God. That was God. That was, <laughs> that was God. Yeah. So when you're in the press of life, and you're in the press, and God's got you there, and listen, the Holy Ghost did lead Jesus into the wilderness. He led him into the press. Yeah. Come on now. And then Satan took an opportunity to do whatever Satan does, but Jesus answered. And that's your key. Whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your job or your book. Come on, hello. Some, see, Christian nature or whatever Christians have been taught are like, yeah, it's Satan. It's all Satan. It's all Satan. Well, it might be God. Come on. He may be leading you into that place to form character, integrity, commitment. Come on now. He, listen, say, God does not test with evil, but he will test your faith yes. to see if you really believe him. Yes. And so if you're in that place right now, that place of testing, I got, <laughs> I got good news for you. You're going to come out on the other side. Yes. And when you come out on the other side, it will be a great reward because you passed the test. Yes. And then remember this. It's just temporary right now. It's just a temporary, a temporary affliction. God, God will not leave you there. I'm telling you right now, he will not leave you in that place right now. Because he loves you. He, he hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. He'll never relax his hold on you. He will not, he will not, he will not. Surely he will not ever leave you. Ever. So just take the opportunity, you know, to say, Lord, okay, whatever you're te teaching me, whatever, whatever test I'm right now, whatever it is, I'm going to come out. That's the reason why he turns all things for your good. Because yes. it's just temporary. You're not going to fail. You're not going to give up the contest. No, I will not be defeated, yeah. and I will not quit. Amen. No matter what comes. I, no matter what comes, the way, I will not be defeated, and I will not quit. Somebody say, I will not be defeated, and I will not quit. I will not be defeated. I will not quit. No matter what the circumstance, I will not be defeated. 
and I will not quit. Will not quit. Yeah, just keep going. Amen. Listen, you got, you got the word of God. You got the angels of heaven. You got the Holy Ghost. You got Jesus. You got God Almighty back in you. Come on. You're going to make it, and, and actually better than being making it. You're just in a temporary situation. Just turn to your neighbor and say, you're just in a temporary situation. You're in a temporary. You're just temp- it's just temporary. Just temporary. It's not going to last much longer. Come on, and make sure you pass the test. Come on. Turn to your other neighbor and say, make sure you pass the test. <laughs> make sure you pass the test. Can you say Amen. Making it through the press. Amen. You got to keep your attitude right while you're going through it. Don't complain. You're hearing crickets now. Don't complain. Don't complain. Let me share this with you. Oh, I'm going to take a pause for an identification break. Devin Hilson, raise your hand. He has started a car washing detail business, so and his prices are really reasonable. So help the brother out, him and his wife. I want to let you know. It, it just came back to me. He'll, he'll come to you. So it just came to me. That's what we do around here. I, I told him last Sunday I was gonna. I forgot, and then I just saw him. I'm like, oh, I just remembered. Okay. All right. So listen. While you're going through the trial or tribulation or whatever the testing, keep your heart right. I'll share a story with you. Not that Pastor Marie and I are perfect. We 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 got to work these principles just like you do. You know, I, I said that I guess two Sundays ago. You know, Pastor Marie and I sometimes get into heated fellowship, and somebody said, "Really, really, you do?" Well, you got two strong individuals. <laughs> two strong. Sometimes there's. You don't have to worry about World War III in the world. Occasionally, it comes to my house. Praise God, Amen. But we overcome. You have to keep your heart right. Now, watch this. When we were at Rama. <clears throat> It came to a point that we had no money coming in whatsoever, none. We only had one can of tomato soup for a meal. Kids got fed because they would go to school Sunday on, on, during the week. In the morning, they got breakfast. At noon, they got lunch. So it came to a point, like, what are we going to do? So I thought, I guess we're just going to go to the food bank because we don't have any food. So I'm standing in the food bank line, and I'm thinking to myself, we are, I mean, the rent is due, the electric bill is due, the phone bill is due, the school payment is due. We had nada, zero. I'm, t- I'm not kidding you. The bank account was like five bucks, and that was it. So I've been where you have been. Amen. So we decided together we were going to worship God through this and not talk about it, not complain about it, not murmur about it, not even cry out to God about it and complain to him. All we did was worship. Every time I thought, I just praise you, Lord. Thank you that the bills are paid. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I have carpet cleaning jobs. Thank you, Lord Jesus, the money comes in. Thank you, Lord. So we were putting my hand. We were putting our hand to something. I was, we passed out thousands of flyers because I, I took my carpet cleaning business with me to Tulsa. We went to school, so I, I know what it's like to pass out flyers in the snow and walk an entire neighborhood in the cold. But I realized that north that they get their carpets clean before Amen. winter hits and because everybody turns into a bear and they hibernate. And they, don't want any, they don't want any hoses through their front door. And that's for like three or four months out of the entire year. So, but I didn't know that. So I'm trudging through the snow with flyers, right? We're worshiping God. We're praising God. I mean, I thought I knew a lot about faith, and then I went to Bible college. So all of a sudden, after a certain class, we came home, and we weren't going to be able to attend the next class because we didn't have the school payment. And then we were like three days from eviction from the, from the um, apartment complex. It wasn't by choice. I was trying. I'm serious. I wasn't sitting down in, in Millie Muck and Meyer. I was going out every day and passing out flyers on doors for business. So all of a sudden, I get a phone call from a lady that we had done like a month and a half, two months earlier. She says, hey, listen. She says, do you run cables underneath door thresholds for television? I said, sure. She said, well, I have some cable. They want you to run. Why don't you come over? So I was sitting at the table with our last can of tomato soup. 
This is it. Cabin, listen, we were so, so broke, we couldn't even pay attention. It was that, we were that broke. We were so poor at that moment, the roaches, I saw them, they gathered up and left the house because there was no crumbs for them to. They're like, we're out of here. We're going next door. Praise God. Amen. I'm not kidding. We, it, you were, it was at the lowest level. But watch this. We didn't complain. We didn't murmur. Every time we thought about it, I just praise you, Lord. I just praise you, Lord. I just, we might need to go back to that, honey. Praise God. I just praise you, Lord. Some of you might need to do that right now. I just praise you, Lord. I thank you that the bills are paid. I thank you, Father God, I have a place to live. I thank you, Father God, that everything is done. I thank you, Father God, I just praise you. I work, every time I think about it now, I'm in the situation I'm in. I just thank you, Lord, you make my need. You're my need meter. I thank you. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't care how you do it, but I know you're going to do it. So that's what we did. And so I went to this lady's house. And she said, how much are you going to charge me to, to put a cable underneath the threshold? I said, it's only going to take me 10 minutes. How about 10 bucks? Because I had none. Zero. I'm not exaggerating. Zero. She said, well, I don't want to pay you $10. And I'm like, okay. Uh, I'll do it for five. She said, no, I'll give you 25 I'm like, oh, well, all right then. That's good. So I'm working, and all of a sudden, her husband came down the stairs from his office. He said, I understand you're a Bible school student. I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, he said yeah, how is it really? Because sometimes people, you, know, you ask people, and you're like, oh, praise the Lord. He's the head. I'm the head, not the tail. And they're like, their life is just crap at the moment. And they're not really making a positive thing. They're just being Christianese. Anybody ever come across somebody that's just Christianese? You know, they're not really in faith, but they don't want, they don't want to tell you how bad their life is. Yeah. So he said, tell me really. I said, well, Mr. Milo, I said, I just ate my last can of tomato soup. I said, the rent is due, the electric's due, the phone bill's due. I said, the school payment's due, and we're three days of getting evicted from our apartment. He said, really? I said, yeah. He says, um, do you clean cars? And I said, yeah, we clean cars. And he said, well, how much do you charge a car? I said, $35 a car. He said, I don't want to pay you $35. I said, well, I'll give you a discount, $25. He said, no, I want to pay you $65. Amen. So I'm at $25 with the threshold, $65 for one car. And he said, I want, and we got two cars in the garage. Can you get those two? So I'm like, oh, this is great. 25, 65, 65. I mean, like 130. That's, that's a, 130, 40, That's 155 dollars. I think this is awesome. And so I, I'm going to work and I'm doing everything. And he goes, now how much do you owe him? And I said, well, whatever you said. <laughs> whatever you said. <laughs> whatever you said. He said, okay. He said, well, here's your 155 dollars. And he goes, um, by the way, he said, um, we're in the benevolence ministry. And we have a warehouse of food for our ministry. He said, um, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to come once a week on Friday and load up your truck with free groceries. And he said, we have all up-to-date groceries. He did, and he said, we want to do this for you for the next two years. And he goes, oh, by the way, he opens up his wallet and he goes, here's, here's the minute. He said, how are you doing with gas? I said, well, we're doing okay. He said, well, here's the ministry gas card. He said, I want you to fill your truck up for the next two years once a week. And then he goes like this. He said, now, how much do you owe on your rent? So he takes, his, he takes his hand, puts it in his pocket, pulls out these $100 bills. He said, how much is your rent? I said, $420. He went, one, two, three, four, 20. He said, this month, one, two, three, four, 20. Next month. He said, how much is your school payment? I said, $450. He went, one, two, three, four, 50 this month. Now, this time, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I'm standing, I'm, I'm, the, lip, the lip is, the lip. <laughs> now, mind you, when I left the house, I, I teared up at the house. We had our last can of tomato soup because I learned something in Bible college that I had been taught wrong for a very long time, and God did a correction. And as I'm at the table, I'm weeping, and, and I'm crying because pastors, they're, 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 some pastors, they're just doing the best they can. So pastors were on my heart. And the Lord said, listen, just forgive my pastors that have taught this wrong. They're, they're only teaching of what they know. Amen. So I left the house with tears running down my face. He said, just pray for my pastors. I said, okay. So I left tears. So when I came home, Pastor Marie only knows I left with tears. So when I walk in the door, I'm like, <gasps> she, goes, she goes, oh, baby, crying again. And, then, and I took the water money out of my pocket, threw it on the table. She was sitting on the couch. She went, ah! 
<laughs> fell over on the floor crying. <laughs> making it through the press. Come on, making it through the press. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can make it through the press no matter what the situation is, no matter what you're doing. Well, I have another eight to ten more pages to go. You'll have to come to Life Christian University. Praise God. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet if you would. Thank you for joining us today. To learn more about the ministry and get additional resources, you can visit us at jackmyersministries.com and lifefamilychurch.net.